So, just sweeping the pool outside in the first house I ever had a pool in and the mind is active whilst the body sweeps the pool the brain is active and so instead of meditating to disentangle myself from the activities of the brain which can't be stopped by the way a lot of people meditating get very frustrated when their mind doesn't stop doesn't stop so he's sitting there saying put to put to breathe in put breathe out to and as they're doing that you're thinking oh I forgot to call my mum to tell her I'm going on a retreat and I won't be at home and not to call me and then you think oh damn I lost put to and I was still thinking and so we get frustrated. But the thing is, the brain isn't going to stop thinking. Our mind isn't stopping thinking now. And I don't want to be the thoughts of the brain. Sorry about the noise. Uh, so. That was good. They stopped for a moment. Anyway, they're back again. So. Uh, I don't want to be in the thoughts of the brain. I just let them go all their own way. And so whilst they're rolling along, at least the ideas they're having, whilst I'm letting them go their own way and keep a still mind, whilst all of the storm around, the eye of the storm is whirling around me, my thoughts, my emotions, all the thoughts and the emotions, better said, because they're not mine. If they were mine, I could tell them what to do, but I can't, they just do what they want. Hmm? So uh, I decided to, instead of spend the time trying to control my mind, just let it go and do what it wants. But to stand aside and watch it and uh, not play with it, not join in the game, just watch it. And so uh, I think what my brain thinks the brain thinks you see how we get entangled mm? I think but first of all the brain thinks mm? and then consciousness occurs once the brain thinks it stirs the waking awareness or the knower awakes and the knower awakes and so that bounces back to the brain and the brain knows it's thrown a ball and the ball's bounced back. And so it hits the ball back again and all of a sudden we've got tennis. We've got tennis going on. And uh, that's when we lose control. That is when thought of the mind or the brain, you need a brain to have thought really, rational thought. And so a brain and then you can have a mind and uh, thought in itself is just a pure thought but what it can become that's conditioning that's sankara that is uh, conditioned thought formations formations and so when a thought occurs if we identify it as our self so instead of saying the brain, the mind is thinking this, you all of a sudden think, my mind thinks this. And the next step is, I think this. So from the brain thinks this, and the mind sees this, and the mind concludes this, and the illusion of, of the, the owner of the mind thinks it sees this, and then the owner that thinks it is the mind thinks it is this and that is self-identification or sakyatiti 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 means uh, uh, belief in the self and so it is said that an arahant he has stilled his mind, he has stilled his passion, or hers, 
and still the causes of rebirth but the causes of this life are still there and so the, this life has to finish but after this there will be no more and whilst there is this life and this body even an arahant has to have the five components of the five aggregates the khandhas in buddhism it's categorized into five uh, separate categories I'm sure there are different ways you could categorize it and split it up. There always are in anything, but anyway, you need these aggregates and uh, that means you have to have thought formation, thoughts, and you have to have uh, emotions will keep rising and fading, just as impermanent as they always were, but they will... I suppose it's like watching pictures in the flames of a fire. The fire is burning in the fireplace, but you're sat on the sofa and you're watching those flames flicker, but you don't let them form into goblins or into shapes or faces or because those would be mental formations. They're not real. And that's where we see the thought, awareness sees the thought, and then conditioning arises through contact with the thought between the consciousness and the thought formation. But if the thought occurs and there's no tennis going on, be it either between the mind and the heart, so feelings and thoughts is usually what happens. They are like a yoke, they are interlinked. And something happens with contact when consciousness knows a thought, a reaction in the heart occurs, I like it, I don't like it, I don't care and all sorts of more subtle variations of those three proliferate from the emotions we can react with. And that emotion itself bounces the tennis ball back to the mind, which then, if it's got angry, it will start thinking, siding with itself, and start thinking accusatively of others, and looking to blame. Or if it's thinking a good thought, then it will go the other way, and so on. I would look to do, dance and make somebody laugh or look to be nice to somebody or whatever, yeah, or sad or regret, then you react in a different way. And the thoughts and the emotions, as soon as they happen, if you are entangled through self-identity view and think, this is me, this is mine, this is happening to me, you're going to get all screwed up. And you're going to be unskillful because it will take hold and you will lose your, con your wakefulness, your mindfulness. And that's where karma happens. And this is all part of the wheel of dependent origination and what causes us to be reborn. And it is seeing these processes, which are not self, they are just natural processes which occur, they're functions of evolutionary nature, of natural selection. You will see that when uh, I watched a horde of snakes and a horde of, uh, what were those animals? Horses, horses in the wild in Alaska, uh, in Canada, and they were uh, feuding for the female. Uh, one, one stallion, he gets uh, maybe 15 females around him and he has them all and he guards the water hole. <clears throat> and then another horse comes along. If if he wins that stallion, if he beats him, he gets all of his wives and the water hole and the other stallion is lost. And uh, the anger that happens in the animals when it's time for them to fight for the strongest genetic strain is a natural part of the evolutionary survival process and evolution and uh, natural selection of the best of the species. Uh, so they're just not self, they're just natural, elemental, blind, natural processes mm, of nature. But we as humans, through our complex thoughts and our advanced brains, we identify them with a sense of self. And that's where all our suffering comes from. But uh, thought and emotion doesn't stop but it can be stopped from becoming formations and proliferating and playing tennis between the mind and the heart. And I suppose that is the goal of one of the one of the goals of seeing, to see the process happening in real time and to notice 
the disadvantages of the process and to notice how one is entangled and to check out self-identity view how, what a role that plays in how emotions and thoughts arise and take hold of each other and shake each other up like a bottle of pop a bottle of pepsi cola or something a bottle of coke a bottle of whatever i'm not advertising somebody especially not those two companies so watching that and seeing where it's happening and seeing self-identification as the cause of thought and emotion proliferating and growing up into becoming something rising up and starting to form into a story and to see karma in that and to see not self in that to see that it is not self it cannot be controlled they're just natural blind processes invisible processes that are driving like the force of gravity you can't say I am the force of gravity that's my soul you can't mm. and so all of these driving forces within us they're elements that's why an hour hand is supernatural uh, a Rusi or a monk who learned how to levitate or how to make himself invisible he's using natural laws he's using cosmic natural scientific laws mm. Even if they're not laws, our sciences know they're scientific laws of the material universe. But a person who overcomes the natural instincts programmed into our genes and our DNA from generation to generation, as we have evolved, come out of the sea, if that's true, and how we became plants and animals, bacteria, uh, mammals, until we became mammals. And then we discovered fire and we learned how to cook food and make tools and discovered iron and learned how to trade and live in the communities and now we're what we call a civilization. Not yet really, we're not enlightened, we're still a bunch of savages. We're still in illusory existence because when we are enlightened there will really be heaven on earth because everybody will be pure and it's going to happen. It's going to happen. It's already happening. It's been happening for quite some time now. But it's not happening to everybody at the same time, at the same rate. It's happening to each individual at the rate that he realizes through his own path. But it's coming. And each and every one of us, in this life or the next or another, we will all wake up. And when everybody's awake, there will be only the problem of material existence but there won't be the problems of mankind and once everybody is enlightened there will be no more rebirth in realms of samsaric existence and the way to enlightenment part of it is what I've been talking about to see thought formations arising to see uh, emotional formations arising and to see what role we play in allowing those formations or even creating those formations or allowing them to proliferate allowing the clouds to billow out and become shapes and forms and then get lost in those shapes and names and forms it's to do with form and name form and name mm and to watch the processes inside, to look at the workings of the engine, to switch it on and just let it run. Don't switch it off. Let it run and watch it and follow it along the whole chain of events. Follow what is physical sensation through the six senses and their six ob outer objects or inner objects, smells and tastes, memory of smells and memory of tastes. Mm. You can still do that. It's not, a, it's not a sensory perception as such, but it's linked. And uh, so your sounds in your ear, your smells and your nose, your tastes in your tongue, your uh, imagery and your eyes, and your feel sensations, physical sensations and your skin, mm. and your mind and your thoughts. Uh, mind and your thoughts, the mirror of your mind. The mind is a mirror. And uh, to look at them, are they impermanent? 
are they unsatisfactory because they're impermanent and clinging brings suffering? And are they controllable? Are they mine or are they me? And perceptions, emotions, even the perceptions are impermanent. I'm perceiving a thought, I'm perceiving a bird and a thought about what the bird is doing, drinking or having a bath. I'm eating this food and this food's delicious and I like it. That's an emotion that is perception of the food, the taste of the food, the feeling of it on your tongue, the crunchiness, the concept of crunchiness, the sound of it in your skull as your teeth crunch on the vegetable. And the feelings inside and the thoughts about the feelings, the reactions of thought and the reactions of emotion, how they bounce each other, the ball across to each other in a repetitive way, like playing tennis. And how our awareness, our mindfulness gets lost and entangled within it. And we become it in our minds, we think we are it. Where in truth we're just lost in the process, we are not there anymore. We are not being me, when we think I am me when we're doing that. But actually we're asleep when we're doing that. We're awake when we step out of that and let it get on with its business and we sit in the car and let the car run but we don't interfere with it, we just watch it, listen to it feel its vibration, hear its sound, feel its warmth but it's warm, I'm not warm, I can switch the aircon on in my mind and so I've just about swept this thing which my mind, which the mind <laughs> reflects to my to the consciousness you can see it in process to my consciousness oh no to the consciousness it's good to teach yourself to uh, change your terminology because it wakes you up it warns you and says no that is a self-identification to say me mine and start to say the the consciousness the body the mind the brain the heart the sort of my feelings, my opinion, is the opinion of this brain. Mm. This brain is forming a view and then you can tell people the view that the brain is forming and finish by saying, but that's not my view because I don't have a view. The Buddha didn't believe in views and neither do I because all views are one-pointed. They're not multilateral and they're not all-encompassing. It's just a view and they're false in nature, in principle. And so, even if the brain is starting to create views, I'm not going to pull out a flag and start protesting for those views because they're not mine and they're not me. They're just thoughts arising. Hmm? and disentangle from it, may we all. And so, my pool is swept, the pool is swept. Hmm? This thought formation is now completed. And that's me, John Spencer, an imaginary person, signing off. <laughs>